I am Jeremiah Ajuda Dusu, the author of Jad's Business and Financial Accounting. I am All right. Uh, <clears throat> let's not waste time. You know, of course, you know what we've been doing. We're still on group balance sheets, what we call consolidated balance sheet, okay? So we're making progress, right? So let's proceed here. Okay, today. Okay. Like this. Say group or Okay, so today we're looking at um, dividends of subsidiary received by parent. Okay. Now, at this level, I'm sure you understand uh, what dividend represents, okay? So, dividend is like, um, you know, the part of the profit made by a company that is, you know, shared or given to, you know, shareholders. So, as a shareholder, you have right to dividend, right? So, when a company makes profit, and then that part of the profit that they give to shareholders, you know, for investing in the company is dividend, right? So... Um, as a company, or let's say as a subsidiary, for instance, you would agree with me that the holding company or the parent company is a shareholder in the subsidiary. Okay? So, where the subsidiary declares dividends, of course, it is shared between, you know, the shareholders, which is the holding company and the minority interest, right? Okay. So, now, of course, we understand that um, dividends... Are declared and then or proposed and then paid after approval right okay now uh, you must also understand that um, dividends represents an income to whoever is receiving it so if I have shares in a particular company and I'm paid dividends it's, it's, it's an income to me so where the subsidiary declares dividends and then pays the dividend to uh, the shareholders, of course, the parent company inclusive. So, from the parent company's perspective, dividends represents what? Income. Okay? So, to the parents, so to parents, right? Uh, dividends is an income. Alright? Well, then, of course, income are like profits, which eventually forms part of the reserve, right? Okay, now you must also understand that when dividend is declared, they are hardly paid in the year that they are declared. So if dividend is declared in, let's say, 2015 accounting year, they will hardly pay that dividend in 2015. So most likely they will pay dividend of 2015, 2016. So you have to know that there's a difference between the date that dividend is paid and the year for which it is declared. So if dividend is, is, is declared for profit or from profit made in 2015, and then it is paid in 2016, it does not mean that the dividend is for 2016. The dividend for 2015 will paid in 2016. Okay? So it's it's even highly rare, it's rare that dividends are paid in the year that they are. They are declared. Maybe you're talking about interim. Of course, interim does not mean final. We're talking about final here. Okay? So, we have to understand that when dividend is paid in a particular year, it's most likely dividend of what? The previous year. Okay? Now, the holding company uh, will decide on how to account for its own share of the dividend. Okay? Policies differ. They can decide to accrue for it, whether it is paid or not, okay? And then, uh, most likely, they want to account for where it is received. 
So the holding company is only accounting for the dividend received from the, uh, the subsidiary when they receive it. That is, when it is paid by the subsidiary. So if the subsidiary has not yet paid, whether they declared it or not, they are not accounting. Holding company will not account. Some policies are like that. So in this class, we're looking at that policy where the holding company only accounts for the dividends of the subsidiary when they receive it. That's from their perspective, they are receiving. But from the source perspective, they are paying. Okay? So uh, we must understand uh, that since the dividend is an income, so it's simple. It's simple. So it means that if the dividend is received by the what, holding company, it is paid into the bank, right? So what do we do? We debit what? Bank. And then credit what? Profit and what? Loss. This is a typical thing to do. But because of the fact that it is a profit, okay, we must understand, you know, the accounting year for which the dividend relates. Because it is possible that the dividend relates to an accounting year, okay, that precedes the acquisition of the subsidiary. Okay? So, what I'm saying is, we agree now that what? Dividend for 2015 is what? Paid in 2016. Okay? So, now what we are now saying is, where the, uh, the holding company is accounting for, you know, when they receive it, of course, this is what is expected. Debit, bank, credit, profit, and what? Lot, because it's an income to the holding company. But now we must also understand that it is possible that the dividend relates to a profit preceding the year, or sorry, preceding the date of acquisition. So where the dividend is from a profit that precedes the date of acquisition, then that means you are likely to have pre-acquisition what dividend and what post what acquisition what. Dividend. So when you hear post acquisition dividend, it's just like your post what acquisition result. When you hear pre acquisition dividend, it's just like your pre acquisition what result. So it means that if you have, you know, the accountant taking this step, debiting the bank and creating PL where the dividend is received, it's fine. But we now have to be sure that. The dividend that has been credited to the PL is entirely okay, a post what acquisition what dividend. If it's not entirely a post acquisition dividend, then we must take out the pre acquisition element. So this is what is expected for what? Post acquisition what dividend. But if it is a pre-acquisition dividend, we expect that we debit what? The bank and credit our what? Cost of what? Investment. Okay, so this is for what? Pre-acquisition what? Dividend. You debit bank, credit cost of what? Investment. Okay? So now, it means that wherever there's a dividend accounted for by the what? Holding company, we must be able to ensure that we get out the pre-acquisition element and the post-acquisition element, and then what? Account accordingly. Okay? So we are the accountant as what? Debited bank and credited profit and loss. We must be, we must be sure that the Dividend taken to what the P and L must be entirely what dividend declared from a profit after acquisition. But where there's a part of it that is pre, the one that is post is good there. But the one that is pre must be taken out and then taken to where? The what cost of what investment. I'm sure you know how to read that journal already. So that means that if they are already taking this step. They are already taking this step, and the one that enters here has a pre-element. We must reverse that pre-element, okay? 
by what? Debiting the P and L and then crediting our what? Cost of what? Investment. The same thing is possible that the guy might have done debit bank and then credit what? Cost of what? Investment. Now we must be sure that the dividend taken to cost of investment is it entirely pre? If it's entirely pre, that is okay. But if it is not, then we must leave the pre element there and take out the post element to where? To the profit and loss. So the point I'm trying to make here is that, okay, dividends that are pre acquisition dividends has effect in determining the goodwill at consolidation. Now, dividends that are post acquisition dividends will be treated as part of your consolidated profit and what loss. Okay? So that is simply how we treat dividends received by the world holding company. We have others in today's class. We're looking at what dividends received by the world holding. So the holding company's policy is to account for the dividend when it is what received. And I said that the dividend can be pre-acquisition or post-acquisition. If the dividend paid has been you know paid for profit or declared from profit that is before acquisition dividend as pre-acquisition dividend. It will form part of what? Computing the goodwill and consolidation. But if it forms, you know, part of the profit that you know uh, the business the sub is made has made after acquisition, okay, then it will form part of your CP and L at consolidation. That is simply what I am trying to what, explain here. So simply put, you know, dividend what received by what parent company okay we expect it to be what pre and what post pre here yeah, goes to cost of investment post goes to what consolidated profit and what loss now don't forget that it is possible that the accountant might get creative, of course, not with the intention to what, mislead the users of the what, information. So rather than you know taking it to P and L or cost of investment, they might even create you know a ledger that will capture that dividend, but to be in the what balance sheet. Now the question is, dividend is an income. If it's going to be in the balance sheet, it will likely be a liability because incomes. Income items and they behave the same way. Of course, in the trial balance, in your ledger balancing, incomes have credit balance, like these have credit balances. So if you're going to put any item that is represented as income in the balance sheet, it will be at the liability side. So and if it is dividend related, that is dividend that you have received from your subsidiary, it shouldn't be in the balance sheet. It's an income item. So it means that you have to now what analyze that dividend into its pre-values and the post-values. So as to what nullify that what ledger that has been created to capture it. So the pre-values, okay, goes to your cost of investment and then the post-values go to your what? Continue profit and what? Loss. So with that, you'll be able to take off that item from the average side and then put it in what? The necessary or the required or the, you know, account that is expected, you know, to accommodate such what? Values at what consolidation. So this is simply a summary of um, you know accounting for dividend that is received by the um, holding company you know from the word subsidiary. And don't forget you know there are other scenarios. But in this class we're looking at you know the policy of the holding company you know being that they only account for dividend received, okay, or dividend declared by what their subs when it is what you receive. So if they have not received it, they are not going to account for it. So that is the scenario we're looking at today. So only when they receive it that they will account for it. And then I've been able to tell you how to account for the dividend in such scenario. Okay? So your pre-acquisition element is important and then your post-acquisition element is important before you raise your words.
join us at consolidation. Don't forget, you know, dividends paid to minority interest, you know, are to them. So it has nothing, basically, you know, uh, you know, uh, no effect at consolidation because it has been paid, it's even off the book of subsidiary, except where it is a proposed dividend. That means it has not been paid, that's a liability item. We'll look at that later. Okay? That means it's a liability item. So if it is a proposed dividend, then that means it's going to, you know, uh, appear as a liability even at consolidation because it has not been paid. So maybe uh, payables, you know, to uh, dividend payables to minority was interest. We'll look at that, you know, in our other classes. But in this class, we're going to know, look at, you know, accounting for dividends received by the what, holding company. Okay, so if uh, the holding company's policy is that the only account for dividend when it is received, then this uh, is what, you know, it will look like. The pre element and the post what element is very, very good, important. So take your time, go through it. If you have questions, you can reach me on numbers, it's going to reply with the right word answer. So let's quickly take a very simple question and see what it looks like. When are we accounting for dividends received by the what holding company from what the subsidiary? Okay, let's quickly pick, pick at this look at this very simple question and then so I will understand you know, exactly what we're talking about. So let's go. So we have uh, the phone represents the balance sheet of Kings Limited and Queen Limited around about 2019. So we have the assets, land, building, furniture, and creditors, even in Queens, cash and bank. All I this here, share capital, owner each, reserve, and then we have dividends received, Queens. Of course, this guy is being creative here. Okay, so we have dividends received there. What's the problem? Why is it there? Should it be, should it be PNL? So we have Kings Limited acquired 90% shares in Queens Limited on the of 2017, when it result was 200,000, okay? That's understood. Then dividends, okay, dividend received by Kings Limited covered dividends declared for 2017 and 2018 accounting year. It is a policy of Queens Limited to pay dividends declared for an accounting year by the June of the following year. So when we declare dividend in this year, we pay the following year. Fine. Now, due to cash flow issues, Queens Limited paid dividends declared for 2017, which is 10 cover per share, and 2018, 15 cover per share in 2019. No dividends was received declared by Queens for 2019. It is a policy of Kings Limited to account for dividends when received. So Kings Limited account for dividend when received. Okay? So you are required uh, to prepare consolidated schedule and then consolidated statement of finance as a very So this is a very straightforward question. So we've seen that there is a 90% acquisition, and then we've seen that there is, you know, uh, a creative uh, ledger there to account for you know dividend that has been paid by the subsidiary okay so the dividend there is a liability item but we believe that it should be an income so it should have gone to pnl which is also the reserve but it's there so we have to find a way to adjust for that right so let's proceed here so we say what consolidated Schedule. Okay. So don't forget it goes like this. So we have cost of control, which is kings in what coins. I think it's 90%. Okay. And then here we have what? Uh what then should be minority interest, which is 10%. Right, they will now have consolidated profit and what loss. Okay, so what's the item that we have? What wins? What's the share capital according to the question? There, share capital is uh, what we have two million, so we have two million, so 90 percent in two million. That's what. For share capital now, 0 0.9 times 2,000, what do we have there? 1.8 million. 
we have one point eight million, right? So my interest is what two hundred. Now, what's our reserve? What's our reserve? Our reserve, according to the question, is what one thousand one hundred. One thousand one hundred. So we have one thousand one hundred. So we have our pre and we have our what post. What is the pre here? They said when it was acquired, it was what two hundred thousand. So we have two hundred. Then here will be nine hundred, right? So what do we do? So we say 90% of 200, 90% of 900. I've already thought this, so it's not something that is new. So 0 0.9, 0 0.9 times 200, you have 180, right? So that's 180. 0.9 times 900. We have 810. That will be CP and 810. Right? So, minority will be 10% of 1100. That's 110. So, what do we have here? If we add this, it should give us 1,100. Okay? So what do we have? 110 plus what? 180 plus 810. What do we have there? 1,100. So this is okay. But don't forget, now there is dividends. Okay, there is dividend. So, what do we do? They said, well, the dividend receivable I'm seeing there is 450, but then they gave us a breakdown. They said that the um, dividend declared for 2017 and 2018 accounting year. Okay, so it's 10 cobalt for 2017. So we have 2017. <laughs> Dividends. That's what Tenko, which is 0 0.1 times. What's the number of shares there? We have 2 million shares, 1 naira each. So that'll be times what? 2,000. So what do we have? 0 0.1 times 2,000. That's 200. We have 200, right? Now, of course, that will be going towards minority interest and what? Parent company. So, parent company will take 90%, and will take what? 10%. So, this guy here is what? 20, right? 10% of this. Then, this guy will take 90, which is 180. That's one. So 2018 dividend. What they say there? They said it's what 15 cover per share. So that would be 0 0.15 times 2000, right? So this will give us what? 0 0.15, sorry. 0 0.15 times 2000. That's 300. So we have so we have for minority interest, we have for parent company. 90% is for what? Parent, 10% is for so this is 30 naira. This will be what? 270. So we have 270 plus 180. What do we have? That's 450. So that means that's what? The 450 in the balance sheet, which is dividend receivable, is the dividend for 2017 and 2018, there was 2019. There was, they said there was a cash flow issue. So don't forget that 
the real time at 17, the real time at 18, is what makes it 450. Now, they're not saying that, they say there's no dividend proposed for 219, okay? So now, don't forget that the Queens was acquired at the Fed at and 17. Queens was acquired in 2017 at the Fed December. Accounting year is January to December. So they acquired Queen at the end of the year. So that means this dividend is dividend from a profit made before acquisition. So simply put, this 180 here is what? Is pre acquisition was dividend. This one it is pre. Eh? Now this 270 is what? For 2018 what? Accounting year. So as at then they have already what acquired what the what subsidiary. So this 2017 now is post. This one is what? Post. This one is what? Pre. So this pre will form part of what? The goodwill or calculation and consolidation, right? How to, how to derive goodwill? Of course, we know we won't have net asset and compare the cost of the investment. So the question is, what do we do? How do we take this thing out of the dividend receivable and then credit it to the cost of what investment? You know how to raise your journal, right? So I believe at this level we should be able to raise your journal. So what do we have? We have dividend what receivable, right? So balance brought forward is four and what fifty. This pre goes to where cost of investment. So we say cost of investment. How much is that? One eighty. This is post. It goes towards CP and L, right? Which is more like your reserve in the what holding company balance sheet. Down is what 270. So that closes this ledger. We have 450. 450. So we'll now open the ledger for we open the ledger for um cost of what? Investments. What is the cost of investment? What is the cost of investment? According to the question, cost of investment is what? 4.3 million. So we have balance brought for 4,300. Okay, we debited it to bring it in and say dividend. Okay, receivable. That's how much? 180. So we have a new balance here. Carry down 4,003 minus 180. 4300 minus 180. What do we have? 4120. 4120. So we have 4300. 4300. Right? So new cost of investment will be what? 4120. Right? So what's the next one now? Our reserve. Yeah? So we have reserve for what? Parent company. So we say balance brought forward. What's the reserve? 1,900. So we have 1,900. So we bring this one here. Dividend was received by much? 270. So we have a new balance here. 1900 plus 270. That's 2170. So we have 2170. So there's a carry down here of 2170. 2170. So the new reserve will be 2170. So after doing this adjustment, Let's proceed. So what do we have here? This one here is 310. This is what? Uh, 0891. So 
So this is your what? Net asset acquired. You can even hold on with this. So what do we do now? Say cost of what? Investment. What's the new value? 4120. 4120. So four one twenty minus one nine eighty. Two one forty. So we have two one forty. This is your what? Your good bill. Right? So we have minority interest. What that give to you? 310. What's the next thing now? Bring what? King's reserve. What's the new reserve here? 2170. 2170. So when you add together, what do you have? Let's add it. 10 minus sorry plus 2170 2980 so we have 2980 so this is your CP and what L so what we've done here basically Okay, is to you know prepare the schedule while also taking into consideration the dividend what element you know as received from the word from the subsidiary. Okay, so what's the next thing now? We prepare the consolidated what balance sheet. Okay, so don't forget what we did here. You know, based on the question, this the dividend receivable is, is a liability item. See, but we were able to identify that there's a pre acquisition dividend and post dividend. So we took it out of there, brought it towards the cost of investment, and then the post we brought it towards our reserve. Okay, some suggestions can take these two elements and bring it here. They will show this, they will show this in the schedule. But all we've done here is to adjust for it in the words, ledger of the word reserve. Okay, so that's what you have. So let's prepare the consolidated words balance sheet. So we say kings and its what subsidiaries. Okay, so it's a consolidated words uh, statement. Of what? Financial position as at 31st December 2019. So we go. So these are our notes. These are assets. Right? So let's see note one. That will be non current. So let's put our note one here. What are the non current asset items? We have what do we have there? We have land and building and furniture and fittings. So let's go land and building. So what do we have? 800, 1090. So we have 800, 800 plus 1090. So what do we have? One 
1890. So we have 1890. So what's the next one? Furniture and fittings. So what do we have? 700 and 540. We have 1240. So when we add, what do we have? Uh, uh, 1890 plus 1240. 1890 plus 1240. 3130. Okay, so we have 3130. So let's go. Current, which is known to us, 2. Okay. Okay, so what is the current asset item? We have debtors and cash at bank. Let's call that note two. Debtors, what are our debtors? The debtors there, we have 500 and 470. 500 plus 470. So what does that give to us? I think that's 970. We have 970. What's the next item there? The next item there, cash at bank. So we have bank. So what are the bank item there? Bank item there, we have 550 and 1000. 550 plus 1000. So what does that give us? 1550. So when you add up, what do you have? One thousand five fifty plus nine seventy two five twenty two five twenty. So we have two five twenty. So when you add up, sorry, don't forget. There's a good wheel. There's a good wheel here. The good wheel here is 2140, right? So let's go. Good wheel, we have 2140. So let's add it. We have 3130 plus 2520 plus 2140. 7790. 7790. So we have the liabilities now. So what do you have? What's our reserve? The reserve here is 2170. And we have what? Share capital. What our share capital? Our share capital is what? Four five hundred. So we have minority interest. Was it three ten? Okay. So what do we do? Let's add up. What are our reserve? Our reserve is 2980. Sorry. I was wondering. Our reserve is 2980. Sorry about that. So let's add up. 2980. 
plus four five hundred plus three one zero seven seven ninety. So this is your total assets. This is your total liability. So you can see that um, the balance sheet here has agreed because uh, we have been able to do the right adjustment as well and then taking the right journals, you know, accounted for dividends correctly and then prepare the what balance sheet. So what we've done very clear is to prepare a consolidated balance sheet where you know the holding company received dividend paid by the subsidiary but we're able to also take out the pre element of the dividend and the post element of what dividend and we accounted for it what accordingly. So take your time go through if you have questions you can reach me on the numbers displayed. And don't forget you can support us by printing account numbers displayed or sponsor copies of my textbook for free distribution to students. Thank you and see you next class. Bye.